officially officially open this meeting. Um, are there? Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I Thank approve. You, Nikki and a second, Jesse. Aye. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and so that done, I would like to skip to welcoming, officially welcoming Jesse, who is a newly appointed member to the Parks and Rec um, Commission. It's nice to have you with us, Jesse. And Thank you I very much. It, it's, an, it's an honor. Um, well, we'll ask you that in a month or two and, and see if you're still playing that same tune. Um, I think you will be. Um, Meryl, I just joked that without you here, you could be elected to all sorts of things. So um, I guess it's good <laughs> that you that you popped in. I um, guess so. Yeah. <laughs> um, can, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 18th, please? I approve. Nikki and the second, Meryl, thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I note that it's unanimous. And um, and then the agenda moves us to the Office of Culture and Tourism uh, for an update of the Children's Beach Concert Series. Hi, hey everybody, how are you? Hi, David. Um, Hi. Our uh, Sunday night concert series, which usually begins in uh, late June, had three out of four, the first four uh, concerts were rained out or had some sort of weather issue. So we um, rescheduled them for uh, other times. And one of them is going to be um, this Wednesday coming up where the community center, um, uh, music, community music center jazz band is going to play at um, six o'clock instead of um, Sunday because of uh, scheduling uh, issues. So um, that's going to be one. Then we're going to uh, extend the, the, we usually end on the 18th or, or mid-August. And so the, then we have an, another reschedule on the 25th, which is a Sunday, um, which is Rebecca Chapa. And then um, we skip Labor Day weekend and then have uh, the, the third cancellation uh, for Sunday, September 8th at five o'clock, which is the Chris Hansen band. Um, so that is our, our issue. And we just wanted to let you guys know, um, that's what we're doing. So, um, that's, that's, you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Can you just, um, repeat the date of the first reschedule? Please. Yes, uh, the first one is going to be Wednesday, August 21st. It's the okay. Nantucket Community Music Center Jazz Band. And they were so um, pumped up to, to play. And, you know, they've been rehearsing for a month or more, and they were disappointed they couldn't play, but they wanted to play at some point. So we were able to schedule them for Wednesday night. Great. Great. Um, any other questions from commissioners? Not right. me. Thank you, David. Um, and I guess we will go on to the um, discussion of uh, membership and, and elections. And I think perhaps, Charlie, at this point, I should stand down and and let you run that part of the meeting. I think that is... Uh, would be the appropriate way to to handle sure. this. Uh, is, is, is there a a volunteer uh, for chair, vice chair, or secretary, or does anybody have any nominations as such? Well, I don't mind continuing my role as secretary if that's good with other people. Right, I, that's wonderful. Happy. I'd be happy to to vice chair if my <laughs> takes chair. 
<laughs> All right, I can see where this is um, leading. We we um, actually have had no discussions about this, no, no. which is appropriate, and it's always awkward when you come <laughs> to a meeting and you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but so I'm I'm hearing a slate, and I'm I'm guessing Jesse, since you're new, you're not eager to throw your hand. Um, into the race for one of those positions, but there's another thing that we'll talk about in a moment. Yeah, I, yeah, that's. I think um, I, I'd like to get my feet in the water a little bit and and see how the board really wants me to go, you know, and then okay. go from there. Okay. Um, so I am hearing a slate of um, Michael Kozord as the chair, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, Nikki Drew. As the, as the vice chair, Mia Culpa, and uh, Meryl McCluskey as the secretary. Um, are there any other nominations then for any of those positions? Um, so hearing none, Charlie, I guess you can is ask there, for a is, vote. Is there, is there a vote uh, on uh, everyone in their newly you know, uh, affirming? Yes. I guess. Okay. Aye. All in favor, say aye. 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 Well, Michael, uh, congratulations on your official promotion. Yeah. Uh, leading <laughs> us as vice chair for a year to the official chair. Um, um, would you so like to take from here or would you like me to continue? No, let me, um, now that I'm officially chair, I'll, I'll um, take over for the rest. We, we do have the position of community Preservation Commission, our representative to the Community Preservation Commission. And, and I do understand, Jesse, that you have some interest in that. I don't know if um, we should first, for the, um, for the edification of our listeners, talk a little bit about what that position entails, Charlie? Sure. Uh, I I'm not, I don't really know much about it. I know we do have a permanent seat on the, uh, on the CPC and there's, uh, you know, there's some heavy lifting there, um, to go through all the grant uh, applications that they receive every year. Um, in, uh, so, tired. Um, so there, there is some, a bit of work there, uh, but we do have a permanent seat there as, as, the, as the parks and rec commission, um, what I, don't, what I, I don't can know offer any more about it. Uh, yeah, I can I can add that, I can add that Ken Beauregard has um, was our representative for many many years and um, was amazing at this. Um, and I don't know a lot more than than you do, Charlie. Other than that, there is a time commitment, um, and you have to do some research. I I understand from Ken. That it's very interesting, um, but but you need to have a level of commitment to it. Jesse, maybe you know more about this position than we do. Um, I mean, a little bit, but not much more. Um, honestly, the uh, I, I I know there's a extra level of commitment and an extra level of work that would be put on on my as a responsibility as a park and rec member. Um, I don't know how the board meetings work. I've actually never witnessed one, but I feel like they're going to be equal votes. Um, and that I'm basically representing the park and rec and anything that comes through the park and rec that the board finds, uh, worthy of CPC funding and, um, representing the CPC for it. Um, other than that, I, 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 I kind of asked a couple of people, like, you know, what kind of hours of commitment is that? Um, and I know it's going to be, uh, you know, some hours, but I don't know how many, but I will find out soon. Um, you know, I, I, I was on the HTC board until a year ago. And uh, the reason why I stepped off that is because I was doing four hours a week minimum. And, you know, with a young family, that's was uh it was too much and so uh, you know the point was is to be able to give back to the community but um not put as much 
time in. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, my overall commitment for community re responsibilities is not going to be more than, let's say, 10 hours a month or something like that. Um, because um, there's just some things I won't do, like miss a kid's, you know, football game or something like that. And uh, so um, that's about all I can say for now. But uh, as soon as I get my feet in, I feel like I'll, I'll learn quickly on what what that is and um and i'm, I'm certainly um got some big shoes to fill and i and i and i won't be able to fill those uh right away but hopefully down the road you know i can make a difference for for the for the for both for both committees i i know that the committee consists of nine members of which um the representative from parks and rec is one and um housing authority, board of selectmen, and then there are two at large. And I know that they study the needs um, and resources of the town regarding community preservation. Um, so, you know, they're, you know, the pre preservation of open space and acquisition of historic um, resources. So it, it from my understanding, it is very interesting. And um, CPC has done some amazing things for the community um, over the years and that serve um, all ages, I would say, not, not simply um, children. So um, if, if that is something that you're interested in, I'm sure we could have a nomination of Jesse, um, I'd be willing to accept that nomination from someone. I'll nominate. Uh, Nikki. Um, I'd also nominate if I need, if. If it needs a second, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, I'd like to say, is there another commission member who would like to be considered? We should be, um, you know, forthright in this. Um, my work. My work commitment is a little bit, a bit much to commit to the CPC right now, but. Okay. Yeah, it sounds interesting. I just don't think yeah. I have. Timing. Time. Okay. Um, then um, say, seeing no more nominations, um, I would like to call for um, a motion to approve Jesse as the Parks and Rec Commission representative. I have a motion. Motion to approve. Okay, and Meryl, I guess I already up. had that. And um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, Jesse, you're it. One meeting oh, in. Thank and, you. And you're in the hot seat. <laughs> I know, right? That, that that that's a lot in one meeting. I um, yeah yeah. I'm a little I'm, I'm a little nervous, but I, I feel like I can uh, I can uh, I can definitely contribute. Okay. So um, sorry to, to put you on hold there, Jackie, as we got through some, some important things. Um, we have a request, Marina, from the Nantucket Project to use Children's Beach um, during the Nantucket Project. Do you want to turn it over to Jackie, or do you want to? Uh, since we have Jackie present, could we all just turn it over to Jackie. Um, they will ask him to use uh, Children's Beach Park area on Fridays, 27th and uh, Saturday, September 28th. It will be just for one hour. So since we don't really have exclusive use of Children's Beach Park for any of the organization, our like one of the condition would be they would need to make that class open to the general public. And we, and we will, yes. We did last year and the year before. So same sort of experience. And Jackie, are you familiar, is um, the organization familiar with any food or beverages that are going to be served and they have to work um, through the concessioner? Yes, Marina, let me know the details. Um, okay. We're thinking just water um, for people taking the class, coffee, and maybe just a snack they can grab and take with them and energy, something to go. So, uh, but I just sent an email to the concession e concessionaires <laughs> and I copied Marina on it. So just waiting to hear back from them. Okay. 
And do any commissioners have any other questions about the request? Um, sure. Can you explain the whole class for me, please? Um, yes, it'll be yoga meditation. Um, pretty much what we did last year, there'll be, we'll supply yoga mats and towels for anybody that attends the class. And it's just a very calming sort of meditative stretching type thing. We do a lot of sitting during the Nantucket project. So it's nice to get people, you know, stretched and relaxed. So that's the goal. Absolutely. Great. And TNP, the whole uh, theme is healing and yeah. right yeah. Yeah. this year. Yep, this year. Yeah. Okay, not seeing any other questions, I'll ask for a motion to approve. I make a motion. Thank you, Meryl. And the second. Um, second. Nikki. Aye. And all of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Hi. You have it, Jackie. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Great. Absolutely. Um, before we get to co public uh, comment, I wanted to go back and just, oh, Jackie. I just wanted to know, should I stay or go? No, you don't have to. You're more than welcome to. Okay. The public <laughs> is welcome, but you don't okay. need to feel. Okay. If you have homework to do, you may go. I'll go. No, thank you again so much. It was very interesting to listen, though. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. See you. Um, so I just wanted to go back and, and talk about, um, I think, our meeting dates and times. We've kicked that around a little bit, and we haven't been able to have Andre here, um, which has been occasionally problematic in, in getting a quorum, although... Merrill and Nikki have been stalwarts in in meeting. Um, but did, is that something that we want to look at changing, or are we going to stick with our Thursdays at four o'clock? Um, I think we talked about maybe an hour later, and I would be happy with that if. You know, right, we did talk about that, and I just didn't know if that was something we wanted to wait until Jesse came to yeah. have that conversation as well. Um, is five o'clock more difficult with a young family or a little bit better than four, Jesse? Um, yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm going to say it, uh, it in, in general, it is uh, uh, easier. Um, and um, I, mean, I don't know my kids' sports schedule too well just yet, but most of their games are on Fridays and Saturdays. So um, I think that works pretty well. Um, and uh, I never get out of work before four anyways. So uh, later would be a little better, but I, I, I'm totally flexible and would go with what the majority wants. How about you, Meryl? Yeah, I mean, I'm... I make four o'clock work. Um, I also, I like to leave work early, um, which is fine sometimes, <laughs> um, but five o'clock, five o'clock would probably be better. Okay. But I also don't necessarily want to be like in a meeting until seven o'clock, but I don't think we, we there, haven't, there was uh, one meeting that went like two hours long one time. So yeah, we haven't <laughs> historically gone, um, too late with those. And I think, I think all of us are in agreement that we want to keep things tight and moving. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I am of that belief too. So I think we can make that work. Charlie, are there any, um, since Maureen isn't here, are there any problems that you or she would see with five o'clock? I don't believe so. I believe this, the zoom here is open. Uh, to do so, I guess one of the questions I would have is, is if we want to explore uh, a hybrid meeting. Uh, I believe Maureen was going to look into possibly the trailer uh, on Pleasant Street, one of the rooms. So if people wanted to attend in person, uh, we could, and then Zoom it would be Zoom capable if you weren't able to get to the the actual uh, room. So I guess that would be a question for the yeah. commissioners if you'd like to explore a hybrid or if if strictly Zoom is easier. Um, that would be a, a decision for you all. And then I will work on with whatever um, you decide. 
Yeah. Personally, I think a hybrid would be great. I think it would be really good to meet in person at some, you know, at some stage. And if it worked for five o'clock, then, and, and especially mid island, it's hard to get out to Madica for sure. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think the hybrid is great. And, and it, if there is a member that needs the remote, you, you've got it. Yeah. Um, but if there are people, and I think there are some residents who prefer to, you know, come into a meeting, um, I guess, so the, the question for Maureen, uh, Maureen then would be, can we do five o'clock Thursdays at the, um, at the trailer? And if we can, then we'll, we'll move to hybrid. If not, we'll keep with remote until we can sort that part of it out. Does that, does that work for everybody? Yeah, mm -hmm. sounds great. Okay. Um, Charlie, I didn't see it on the agenda, but do you have any report to, to make on things um, hustling and bustling at your end this year, this summer? Um, yeah, well, I mean, things have, you know, more or less flowed pretty well. We are um, getting ready to release the tennis courts project uh, out to bid. We're just uh, trying, actually trying to get a copy of the school's IFB just to make sure we've got a couple, some of the language correct um, as to what they put out to bid. So once we have that, I believe the plan is to release that tomorrow. Um, hopefully get some uh, interested Prop, you know, uh, people and uh, break ground on that project as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, that, that's kind of the, the big one there. Um, I'm sure you can get that from Chip Clooney. If not, Diane O'Neill, um, I can still reach Diane and and I'm sure she could access that. But Chip Chip should be able to do that for you. Yeah, I, be I believe Cindy in the procurement office has reached out and they were going to grab this, the scope of work for her. It was just some little language about like the concrete and some other things we wanted to make sure that we, we didn't want to be too vague if the school had done something more specific just because those courts turned out uh, really nice. Okay. And then uh, beyond that, I'm working on just scheduling the servicing of the uh, synthetic field out of nobody here. And again, for the fall, for the fall service and getting the, we'll be getting the lines painted and uh, getting ready to, for fall sports. Uh, we've been talking with Travis Lombardi um, the girls' varsity soccer program is looking to do a lot on the turf this year, including potentially uh, host uh, some home games. Um, so we're trying to work, work that through the scheduling. And uh, if we can help them out, we'll be happy to do so. Uh, nice. Yeah, I've been speaking as a, a former soccer coach. I, I think letting our, particularly our varsity athletes, have a game or two on that field um, as they head towards playoffs is is really nice. I know that um, it's certainly a different game on the synthetic. Yeah, and especially if that's what they're playing on off island, it will give them. You know, they're looking to practice there as well. So I'm trying to work with the youth soccer program to make sure we can be as accommodating as we can, um, because it does make a big difference for especially our varsity athletes uh, as we. To practice on what you play on and if we're practicing on grass here but playing on uh you know turf everywhere else uh would give it really give the program uh which i, I believe has done very well the past couple of years but maybe right on the cusp of just maybe this would be the little bit that pushes them over into the you know the championship brackets so um I, I'm looking forward to, to helping them out as best we can and we're also going to be actually hosting uh, potentially a preseason football game on the turf um really yes on I'm just gonna pull up my calendar here how would you do that without line a uh, line on the, on the 31st it's it's a it's a preseason scrimmage um i did mention to travis i said i don't i don't have football lines there are lines that can be used um you know we used to play flag football out there and we had lines that we were able to make it work with um so he the coaches have all talked and they've agreed that yeah i think it, it's a kind of a backup plan if we have foul weather. The, the traveling team doesn't want to come up, come here, and not be able to play. So if it's you know questionable, or it's or it's too wet, uh, they're going to go to the turf and uh, 
They'll make it happen. That's presently lined for soccer and lacrosse. Yes, it's cross line for for soccer and lacrosse. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad you couldn't. Uh, I know you can't, but it's too oh, bad. I, 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 I did look into. I, I looked into it, uh, but it was fairly expensive. Yeah. Uh, to have a to have a yeah. You know, we would have we have, we're going to have a company come out um, and do the soccer field layouts for us because that proved to be a real time saver for the DPW. Um, you know, there, we had a company come out and two guys laid out four fields in a day, which took us a lot more men and a lot more time um, last year. So, uh, but to do the feed, because it's a different paint product, you have to put down on the synthetic field. And then in order to get those lines, all those lines removed for soccer, they would basically be painting the field and then coming back a week later with essentially a big scrub, motorized scrub brush. And if you've ever seen them change, Gillette Stadium over uh, from football to soccer. It basically, they just they wash the whole field, scrub off all the paint, and then have to paint it for the next thing. So it would just be it was going to be very costly to have the field lined uh, for one scrimmage. If it were a a late season, you know, uh, pre Super Bowl game or something that had to happen there, it, I think that would be a different story. But just being a, a preseason scrimmage, we didn't feel it was worth the expense. Questions from any commissioners for Charlie? No, I got nothing. Okay, Jesse, you you good? I'm good. I'm I'm, I'm going to uh, just be quiet and listen for uh, the first meeting and uh, uh, and then. Uh, uh, but I'm I'm enjoying what I'm hearing and uh, uh, I I appreciate uh, appreciate being on the board. Well, we're happy to happy to have you. Um, and I, I think I will um, probably just try to get in touch with Andre and just have a conversation um, with him to see if the five o'clock is going to be any better at all or whether he's going to have to step back um, from the commission. We'll just, um, I, I hesitated well, to do that without sort of the authority of the of being the chair yeah so would he is he still a member technically for he, uh, he's a, commi a commissioner right Charlie? commissioner yes yeah his, his term expires uh 2025 yeah okay and i guess would he okay theoretically if his position was terminated early if that is possible would we then wait to find a replacement or would like how does that work just out of if somebody if somebody was interested we could have, i believe fill the seat uh, they would just send the application through this is a, a commission that is appointed by libby yeah but uh, it could happen so immediately so just, um, the process is usually if somebody expresses interest we submit their name uh, like oh, i just did this with jesse and then uh typically i will sit down with libby and the candidate have a conversation um, and then we go forward from there if everything works out. Um, so if you have anybody who you think might be interested, um, if Andre is unable to make it work, then it'd be great to get that seat filled uh, quickly, uh, just so that uh, we have a full a full commission. Great. All right. Any other business before this commission? I guess I'll just I'll take a quick moment to just talk a little bit about Tom Nevers and sure. the uh, the the bluff project there, just in case people approach you or ask you as as commissioners, because um, I field you know one or two emails a week uh, about this. I feel um, so a lot of the small debris has been uh, kind of cleaned up, but a lot of the large debris is still there, and unfortunately because of the winter storms we had in December where we lost 30 to 40 feet of bluff face, um, all the plans that were in place have to be reworked for the new topography, which of course delayed us a little bit. Uh, we got, we're a little further delayed because we ran out of the funding. Uh, and so that was just renewed. Uh, we got another $2 million to continue this process at town meeting, which just became available. So we're going to kind of kickstart that all again. And the, the real, pain here is because of where these because of where the coast moved to it has now triggered us to require uh, 
permits from the Army Corps of Engineers. And so our permitting timeline is now anywhere from 12 to 18 months to, to get through all the permitting process before we can actually put you know, equipment or, or anything on the beach to remove um, the big chunks of concrete and that sort of stuff. So I have, I have a question, Charlie. I mean, given how much was lost this past winter and what may be lost again in subsequent uh, years, do we do we need to have do we need to rethink the entire plan for for that area if 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 it just keeps get eaten away um it seems like putting too much money into development right there might not be prudent yeah so one of the things that i'm i'm working on with the engineering team is you know do we Looking at because we know there's a we have ground penetrating radar that shows kind of where a lot of the underground things are. And so one of the questions, one of the things we're working on is do we draw a line in the sand and say, okay, from everything, say from the edge of the asphalt where the field is inward, we're going to work to remove um, because we won't need to go through such extensive permitting because we're not on the water's edge, we're not in the mean tide line. And so we can get permits there faster and start removing things. Um, without having to do necessarily the work on the bluff and then get something in place to uh, sort of like an emergency work order as things, if, if the bluff erodes, when things appear that we can go down and then remove them uh, and kind of, we're trying, so we're trying to figure out the best way to work with this because in 12 to 18 months, this could end up just being delayed, delayed, delayed. If we, you know, if we have another big storm come in and it pushes us back another 10 feet, you know, does that restart a whole permitting process? So it's, it's one of the things that we're looking at is trying to figure out the best way to proceed uh, forward here. I, as a commissioner, I would be interested in, in being a part of any conversation you would have with them. I know we can't all because it would um, be considered a a meeting, um, but I I just think that one of us, at least, should be or two of us should be a party to those conversations. I agree. Yeah, I mean, we, I can uh, we can work on it. It's technically not an official Parks and Rec location, as, as part of the Parks and Rec Charter. It's really, um, but it's one of the things I feel that as commissioners. And it, it is a park and people are going to ask you about it that I wanted to make sure you're informed on. Um, so I, as we, you know, we're kind of, we're waiting, you know, the funds just became available, but as we kick start, as we get our next meeting, I can uh, do my best to keep you informed as to when those are going to happen. Um, and and, that, and, and uh, you know, prize you all on how we're going to move. I think that I, I would appreciate that just as we, you know, sort of went out to, um, the Nobadir site to look at that, you know, what had been done. Yeah, I, I could ask you about expanding yeah. the official locations for the for the commission. You know, I, I think it may have been that back when the commission was started, it was only Children's Beach in <laughs> Jetties. But Excuse we me. now have the Nobadir complex, which is town off <laughs> the Delta Fields. There's, you know, Winter Park, Coffin Park, um, all these other locations that I oversee as the parks and rec manager for the town. So maybe uh, I can inquire as to what it would take to add those officially into the, um, the, you know, the commission's charter and the commission's uh, purview. Okay. Uh, I would appreciate that. I, I want to, I don't see that there is anybody else plugged into this meeting, um, but I'll, I'll put it out for any public comment. Um, if there is any, um, I, you know, Marina, David, Shanta, anything to add? No, thank you for asking though. Okay. Um, okay, absent that, um, I will call for the meeting to be adjourned at uh, 4.35.
Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks, Nikki and, and Meryl, and of course, Charlie. Thank you. We appreciate it, everybody. Thanks, All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, everyone.